right, let's move on. And let's do something now on torques, angular momentum, rotation. And let's do discuss the Edwood machine. Edwood machine is a clever device that allows you to measure to a reasonable degree of accuracy of the gravitational acceleration. Here's a pulley. The pulley has mass m, has radius r. It's solid. So it's a solid disk, rotates, frictionless about point P, radius r, and there is a rope here, near massless. We ignore the mass. Mass M2 is here, and mass M1 is here. And let's assume that M2 is larger than M1. So this will be accelerated in this direction, this will be accelerated in this direction, and this will start to rotate with angular velocity omega, which will be a function of time. And now the first thing we want to do is to make up free body diagrams. Free body diagrams for this one is easy. M1g down and T1 up. For this one, we have M2g down and we have T2 up. For the pulley, it's a little bit more complicated. This is that point P. If here's a tension T1, it's pulling down on the pulley. So this is T1. And this T2 is pulling down on the pulley. So there's T2. It has a mass, so it is weight mg. The sum of all forces on the pulley must be zero, but otherwise it would accelerate down, which it doesn't. And so there has to be a force up, I will call it n, and that force n has to cancel out all these three forces. So that must be T1 plus T2 plus mg. We will not need it any further in our calculations, but there has to be a force to hold that in place, so to speak. So now we're going to calculate the acceleration under the condition that the rope does not slip. That means there is friction with the pulley, not friction here, but here, otherwise the rope would slip, the rope would slip. What it means if there is no slip, that if the rope moves one centimeter, that the wheel also turned at the circumference one centimeter. That's what it means when there is no slip. That means the velocity of the rope, V of R, V of the rope, must be omega times R of the pulley. That's what no slip means. So the acceleration, which is the derivative of that velocity of the rope, A is omega dot times R, which is alpha times R. Omega is the angular velocity, and alpha is the angular acceleration. So this is the condition, it's an important condition for no slip. So let's now start at object number one and write down Newton's second law. I call this the positive direction for object one and I call this the positive direction for object two. Just easier for me. So we get T1 minus M1g must be M1a. One equation. I don't know what T1 is, I don't know what A is. Second equation for this one. I call this the positive direction M2g minus T2 must be M2a. Second equation. One unknown has been added. So I need more. Of course I need more. I also have to think about the pulley. The pulley, the net force on the pulley is zero. That's why this stays in place, but it's going to rotate. Because this force, T2, is larger than this T1. There is a torque relative to that point P, and torque is defined as R cross F. But the torque relative to point P, the magnitude, 
is this position vector times this force. That is a torque in the blackboard. What is in the blackboard I will call positive. The torque due to this force is out of the blackboard and I will call that negative. Since this angle is ninety degrees, I simply get that the torque relative to point P equals the radius of that pulley times T two. That's the positive part and the negative part is the radius times T one. Notice that this force and this force go through P, do not contribute to the torque. And that now equals the moment of inertia about that point P times alpha. But since we have no slip, alpha is A divided by R, so it's the moment of inertia about point P times A divided by R. But since it is a rotating disk, which is rotating about its center of mass, I know the moment of inertia. That is one half m r squared, one half m r squared times a divided by r, and I lose one r, and so I find then that T two minus T one equals one half m a. Notice I also lose my second r, and so now I have a third equation, and I can solve for T two, I can solve for T one and I can solve for A, and you can do that as well as I can. If you find a result, you should always do a little bit of testing to make sure that your result makes sense. And what you should do is you should say, you should s make sure that N2G is larger than T2. That's a must, otherwise it's not being accelerated down. You should also check that T1 comes out larger than M1G. That's also a must. And you should also check that T2 be larger than T1, otherwise the pulley wouldn't rotate in clockwise direction. It would also be useful, which is a trivial check, to, s to stick in your results M1 equals M2. That should give you that the acceleration should be zero and it should give you that T1 equals T2. Those are obvious things and that can be done very simple. That takes you no more than ten seconds. And if it's any one of these is not met, then somewhere you've slipped up. And it gives you an opportunity to go over the problem again.